Have you ever fantasized about your perfect relationship? What it would be like to be locked within the affections and soul of another person, and when you're together, the entire world seems to disappear, and all that's left is the two of you, bared completely and accepted fully for who you are, all your vulnerabilities on display, and you're free to love, to cry, and to hold one another, and you truly believe it's the kind of love that can last forever. Now, have you ever also fantasized about that love being attached to a famous porn star with gigantic tits and a nymphomaniac level of enthusiasm for wild sex to complete your every desire? Oh, but then do you also fantasize that that porn star girlfriend is loyal to only you and has the ability to turn into a giant naked kaiju human thing that can fly, shoot energy beams like Ultraman, and literally rips open other kaiju-sized monsters in a barrage of blood and guts that rain like hellfire down over an unsuspecting city while the entire world votes for natural disasters or monsters that will likely strike next? Well, if you answered yes to all of the above, then I have the manga for you. And it's called... Gigant by Hiroya Oku. Okay, so Hiroya Oku is admittedly a very weird guy that tends to make manga that's, let's just say, on the extreme side. Oftentimes being looked at as style over substance and explicit for the sake of being explicit. His works are usually science fiction stories that are full of over the top violence, gore, sex, and nudity, often involving girls with gigantic tits, and his reasoning when asked about this was simply that. He likes tits, and he likes to draw them, and I respect that answer. But if I'm being honest with myself, his two other manga before this one, Gantz being the most famous, and then Inuyashiki, both of these manga are in my top 10 favorites, and not ironically. I mean, I truly do love them and think they are a lot deeper than most people give them credit for. And they actually have some wholesome things to say about what it means to be human and about connection. Gantz is my number 6, and Inuyashiki is my number 10. And though Gigant did not crack my top 10, and yes, I do think it's his weakest story so far, I still think he is able to uniquely provide a satire on a lot of things happening in our modern culture. Oh, by the way, when I make these reviews, I go strictly by my own interpretations, so let me put a disclaimer up that I have no fucking idea whatsoever what Oku was actually trying to say with this story, but I will tell you exactly what I was getting out of it as I read it. Also, if you guys would be so kind, please go down below and like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would really appreciate it. It would help me out a lot. Also, I'll do my best to keep the spoilers at a minimum, but I will have to talk about the general storyline and some few specific scenes to get my points across, so if you want to go into Gigant knowing absolutely nothing, then probably don't watch this video right now. But if that doesn't bother you, please continue watching. Anyway, Oku is an author that is very tuned in to pop culture, modern technology, what people are doing online, and obviously shown within this manga, understands the obsessive follower nature people have with internet personas, most notably those that do sex work, and the desires that an average guy with no desirable qualities themselves, and how lost, alone, and desperate they feel, and how much they are starved for attention and affection. That it's not the sex that lonely men want, it's the experience of having a girlfriend, which this manga 100% capitalizes on and satires. And I truly do believe that Oku is an extremely smart guy, and he has a great awareness of these things, and is able to provide a satire on society while masking it within a ridiculous over-the-top premise, and then tie it in all together while providing a particularly wholesome experience on occasion with a love story that's front and center. So what is Gigant? about. Um, it's both simple and hard to describe. So the main character is Rey. No, actually, the main character is Papiko. But the story begins with Rey. And he is a high school student who dreams of becoming a film director. Which I loved because that was very personally relatable to me. In high school, I was always trying to make films with my friends and had the same kind of conversations that Ray has with his friends, where they would walk around the halls debating directors' best films and what actors they'd want to work with and all that kind of stuff. But on top of that, Ray is also your typical lonely, touch starved, nerdy kid also relatable to my teenage life. His room is decked out with nerdy posters, action figures, and all in all, he probably represents the demographic for a lot of manga readers. And Oku knows this. And he made Rei 
kind of a blank slate of a character beyond these basic points, and I believe this was so that the reader has an easier time relating to him, assuming the person reading this is a straight male. And with that, we get into the fantasy fulfillment element, which of course deals with Papiko. Uh, her real name is Chiho, but I'll just say Papiko for convenience sake throughout the whole video so it doesn't get confusing, but Papiko is her stage name. And yes, she does do porn, and yes, she has gigantic big mommy milkers. Ray is a huge fan of hers and finds out that she's staying near him, and he also sees that somebody put up a ton of flyers that are shaming her around town, so he takes it upon himself to take all of the mean-spirited flyers down. Papiko sees him doing this and thanks him, but then she takes him out to dinner. Then they exchange numbers, and basically the big famous porn star who has her pick of the litter starts to be won over by the inexperienced and shy film kid that's never had a girlfriend before. And look, I'm not saying that this is an impossible scenario, but come on. This is the fantasy element of the story that it's fulfilling, and by fulfilling it, it also does provide a commentary on the idea of that fantasy. So Ray shoots his shot and originally is shut down and starts to cry. Oh my god. I do like the brutal realism of one panel of Papiko telling him that seeing him crying is starting to turn her off. Yeah. But despite this, she does agree to go out with him, and the two grow even closer. I also say Papiko is the main character because she has a lot more character than Rei, and actually has an arc alongside of her. She carries with her the tropes of a mismatched past, a crazy ex, and childhood dreams of being just like Ultraman. What, that's not what every girl wanted when she was a little girl, to be like Ultraman? Oh yeah, I guess I should talk about the kaiju stuff. Papiko meets a dying man in his underwear, and he attaches a strange weird circular device to her wrist in his last moments that she is unable to remove. While messing with it later, she finds that this device makes her grow giant. Like, really giant. She can adjust the level from normal size all the way to the size of a skyscraper. Okay, you guys still with me? Alright, so get ready for this next part. In the world of this manga, there is a website that is granting wishes. Okay, so what happens is that there is a list of options as to what weird or wild things should happen in the world, and people go onto this website and vote for it. The thing that gets the highest amounts of votes manifests and comes true in real life. For example, people voted for it to rain shit, and it did. And people voted for a giant monster to show up in Japan and wreak havoc, killing a bunch of people, and lo and behold, that giant monster shows up and starts to do just that. Wait, is this the same manga as the one about the teenager and the porn star? Yes. Yes, it is. They're actually banging right now. And uh, let me get back into that. And I'll show you the bare minimum of what I can on YouTube. And yeah, you guys, a lot of the panels of this manga I cannot show you because there's just there's there's just so much tits. Like I, I just can't show you on YouTube. But as the intimacy grows between Rei and Papiko, I think I started to understand something about this manga. Yes, it is totally a simp wish fulfillment fantasy, but it's also saying something interesting about the desire for intimacy itself and the difference between porn and real life in itself. The fantasy of this story is showing what the reality of sex should be like when it comes to truly adoring another person and putting their comfort and well-being above your own, as opposed to the porn, which is usually all about the act of fucking itself and getting off. The irony is that we think of porn being the fantasy but the fantasy is not having sex, but it's having sex with someone you can open up to and find solace and comfort in without judgment. Someone who doesn't need you to be the richest, smartest, most well-off person, but actually likes you for being the nerdy film dork that you are. There is something about this desire for feminine affection, especially in our current day when sexuality is everywhere and displayed in full online everywhere you look, yet there is a distinct lack of connection between people. And when it comes to the feminine, there's sort of this maternal desire for comfort and acceptance. And I know it might sound weird, but as a boy, like your first experience with the opposite sex is your mom. And your mom, with any luck, will show you love, support, and comfort. And it's kind of like, as we get older, men still desire that, but they don't get it from anybody. Not in like a take care of me, wipe my ass, I can't do anything, and I'm helpless kind of way. 
but in the ability to be able to cry or be vulnerable in front of a woman and have them embrace you and tell you that it's okay. Even look at the images in this manga. Papiko is practically bathing him and grows just big enough to nuzzle him within her now even more gigantic boobas. Papiko is seeing Rei as someone to nurture, and it's also as if she needs this to be fulfilled in that she needs to feel valued and important herself as she gets this by being able to take care of another person. Another person needs her around, not just desired for her body and all of the detached nature of pornography. Now look, I am putting zero moral judgments on any of this, I'm just telling you what I'm interpreting from the relationship and the panels that are drawn. I'm not saying anything is right or anything is wrong, I'm not saying anything is justified or not, I'm just saying what I'm picking up from this manga. But there also is the not so subtle fact that Rei is 16 and Papiko is 24. Yeah. So, I guess my comments on this are, well, number one, I don't know what the age of consent laws are in Japan, but I do think it's 16. I'm not sure. I'm not going to look it up for this video. But also, secondly, if the genders were reversed, I doubt this manga would be accepted by anyone. So, there's that as well. And finally, I get that at 16, it's a prime time that you would be having fantasies about, you know, being with a porn star. But couldn't you have made Ray like 18 and a senior in high school? Like he could still be a high school student, but just make him 18. I don't know. It would have felt a little bit better. But anyways, there's still kaiju in this manga. So back to that. Okay, so the interesting thing here. Here is again where I think Oku has a brilliant awareness of social elements and an understanding of modern technology that a lot of other mangas don't include. You might ask why, if there's a website that grants desires, why people would ask for dumb shit like sky poop and kaiju. Well, have you ever been on Twitter before? <laughs> people are the most negligently thinking, backward-ass, destructive, and most horrible as they can be because they have the anonymity of the internet and mostly go by groupthink. How often is there an article with a tantalizing headline and the comment section is filled with people arguing about the headline, but nobody there actually went and read the article itself to know what they are talking about? If a website claiming to grant wishes gave you a list of options that included a bunch of ridiculous stuff, people would pick the edgiest, most chaotic thing just to test and see if it would actually happen or not, and that's exactly what's happening in this manga. So with the emergence of a motherfucking kaiju in Japan, Papiko eventually does decide to use her new gigantic abilities to see if she can help. Well, only after Rei is in danger, but still. And despite not having any physical combat training, she decides to use her head in battle and do what Ant-Man should have done to Thanos to finish Endgame a lot quicker, and go inside of his body small and then grow gigantic, blowing him up from the inside out. But this causes a few things to happen, like a gigantic naked D-cup porn star being looked at by everyone around her in the city. Not really a good way to hide your identity here, but here's how it all ties in. So Papiko basically becomes a hero. She becomes even more famous and desired than she was before, which leads her to being involved with the military. She's brought onto various talk shows around the world, and she's starring in legitimate films, including a Godzilla movie. Yeah. Godzilla is in this manga, and somewhere out there in a fictional universe, there is a movie where Godzilla versus a giant naked porn star. Continued satire of the fantasy desire of dating the perfect girl porn star comes in the form of Rei feeling absolutely inferior by comparison, which to be fair, he is. Not only is his girlfriend noticed for being attractive and highly sexual, she's now famous on a global scale and desired by many people for many different things. So it sort of plays on the uncomfortable side that Rey desires this person for intimacy and has only her, but she has to share her time with many, many people, and as a result can't be around him as much. When they are together, the world stops for them both. Various scenes of chapters focus on just the two of them on vacation and just kind of hanging out underneath the stars. The ideal situation of what you would want to last forever. Until reality strikes again and Rey must realize that Papiko is not just for him. Or rather yet, feels like he's not enough for her. 
can she really love him for what he is if what he is is not much besides loneliness and ambition? And yeah, ambition is great and it's a great quality to have, but without the fruits of labor from it, it can leave you feeling empty and unaccomplished. And if you meet that perfect person, and Papico is basically the perfect person, at least from an idealized perspective of a young man, but if you meet that person and you are not your best self, and I would especially say for a man, there is always going to be that sense of emptiness because you want to be the kind of man that she can look up to, admire, and above all else, respect. But besides all that, there is also a group of weird humans in underwear that also all have the ability to grow giant with the wrist device, and they are also obsessed with ramen noodles. They're a little oblivious to human concepts and being social here, and they totally remind me of the Samurais from Ninja Turtles 3. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's probably better that you don't. This manga is 89 chapters long, which is relatively short, especially compared to Oku's other two mangas, and also the final eight chapters I could not find translated in English anywhere. It was only eight chapters, so I scrolled through them and inferred what I could just by the panels, and I think I picked up a good idea of what went on and could give a decent review on. But there's many things that I don't want to spoil in this video, like the ending itself, or the explanation as to why these desires are being granted, or what the wrist devices are that Papiko has that grows gigantic. But honestly, I think it's Oku's weakest explanation for how his science fiction works. I think Gantz works the best, even though a lot of people don't like that one either, but I thought it was brilliant and a great satire on how humanity acts as a whole. And with Inuyashiki, he pretty much straight up ignores the whys and hows and just lets the story be about the characters. And maybe Gigant could have benefited from keeping a lot of things about it a mystery. Like I said, I do think it's his weakest manga, and that boils down to the length of it, number one, it's too short to really expand too much, no pun intended there. Also, Gantz and Inuyashiki leaned heavy into the sci-fi and horror aspects, which helped give the series a punch of intensity that this story just doesn't have. Gigant focuses way more on the characters than it does the concept, but even within the characters, he is working with concepts, but the concepts are internal and do deal with desires and expectations about one another and about yourself, but it doesn't focus as much on the concepts of giants and giants fighting and the kaiju stuff and the sci-fi stuff that stuff does happen i'm just saying it's not the focal point of this manga when i say that oku is underrated i largely refer to how he writes emotion and intimacy while most people got annoyed about the kurono and tai romance in gantz i loved it i loved their relationship and it made me so much more invested within the story and then in Inuyashiki, we focus on an old man who feels useless trying to find a sense of worth by doing as many good deeds as he possibly can and reclaim his humanity. And in Gigant, we get the story of an insecure boy and his fantasies about love, sex, and relationships, and a girl dealing with constant desires and affections from the world around her, but discerning for what reasons people have those desires. Look, I understand that Oku is a wild writer and does a lot of over-the-top messed up and comical stuff, and despite the amount of nudity and sex within Gigant, I think this is actually his most tame manga, especially when it comes to the violence and gore. I mean, this has nothing on Gantz when it comes to that department. So can I recommend Gigant? Uh, to the right type of person, yes. And look, like I said, I could be 100% wrong as to his intentions of this manga. I'm just telling you what I interpreted from it. But there will be people that look at this manga and only see big giant tits flopping in the wind, and they won't get it. And I like to think that I get it. Maybe I don't, but I I'd like to think that I do. Look at it as a study of desire and fantasy. Look at it as social satire. Look at Gigant with an open mind and maybe it can reflect something back to you either about yourself or the world around you, how we view others through a detached lens or through a screen, and what it means to truly be intimate with someone and maybe even love them in the crazy world of 2021 that we live in now. But also, there's lots of tits in this manga, so if you like those, you might want to read it too. Anyways, there's my little analysis of Gigant. Please let me know what you guys think of this manga. Please tell me your thoughts and feelings on it down below in the comments. I'd be very curious to read them all. 
Also, please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content. Trying to get to maybe 75k by the end of the year, so that would be really, really cool if you help me out and subscribe. Also, check the description for my Patreon and merch store and all the various social media links where you can follow me. Other than that, guys, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you next time.